Good morning and welcome to WWDC. Today, we're going to push each of our platforms forward in some exciting and breakthrough ways. So let's get started with iOS. Let's dig in starting with the home screen. Today's home screen works great, but as we get more and more apps, well, this year we're doing just that with something called the App Library. It's a new space at the end of your home screen pages that automatically organizes all your apps in one simple and easy to navigate view. So we created an easy way to hide app pages. I just go into jiggle mode, tap the dots at the bottom, and check this out. I get a zoomed out view of all my app pages. I can simply tap to hide the pages I no longer need. Next, let's turn to widgets. Well, this year, we're taking all that we've learned to create a completely reimagined experience for widget. And we're introducing different sizes, so you can choose one that best fits your needs. I'm just gonna tap and hold on the weather widget, and I can drag it out of today view and onto my home screen. With the smart stack, I can easily swipe through widgets to pick just the one I want for the moment. But what's really cool is that the smart stack can actually do this for me automatically. Next, we're also bringing picture in picture to iPhone. Another iconic experience that's getting a major update is Siri. We've completely redesigned the Siri experience. For example, if you say, open Safari, Siri pops up the bottom of the screen and instantly launches the app. Or if you ask for information, like the weather, results appear at the top of the screen, just like a notification. This year, you can now ask Siri to send an audio message, and Siri will start recording. We're introducing a new app called Translate, and it can work completely offline, keeping your conversations private. Just tap on the microphone and say, you get back the text and audio right away. Next up, messages. We are introducing a new way to let you stay connected to your most important conversations by letting you pin them at the top of your list so you can always get to them. In iOS 14, we're adding even more ways to create your look, and we're adding more age options too. We're adding inline replies that let you reply directly to a specific message. With mentions, you can just type someone's name to direct a message to them. And now you have the ability to only be notified when you're mentioned in the group conversation. We have a new set of features that will help us explore the world again, starting with maps. We're excited to announce we're bringing our new map to more countries later this year, including the UK, Ireland, and Canada. In iOS 14, the Maps team will be working with some of the world's most trusted brands to offer amazing guides. With iOS 14, we're introducing great new features to help our users reduce their carbon footprint. And our first one is also our most requested, it's cycling. We'll even let you know if you have a steep passage coming up or if you'll need to carry your bike up the stairs. For environmentally conscious drivers, we're also introducing EV routing. With iOS 14, Maps will track your current charge and factor in things like elevation and weather to automatically add charging stops along your route. I'm excited to introduce a digital version of Car Keys. It's super simple. It uses NFC and you just tap to unlock. And I place my phone on the charging pad and then push to start. They're even easier to share than a physical key. An app clip is a small part of an app. They start with this card, which quickly pops up. And with just a tap, you can launch the app clip. App clips can be easily discovered and launched from the web. The best way to discover app clips will be with a new Apple-designed app clip code. They incorporate both a visual code and NFC. So you tap on them or scan them with the camera to bring up an app clip. And next up, iPad OS. The first thing that you'll notice are the same redesigned widgets that you saw in iOS 14. This year, we're making it even easier to browse and organize your photos with an all new sidebar. We've brought this sidebar to many apps across iPad OS, like Notes and Files. And once I start playing a song, I can bring up the brand new full screen player. The new compact Siri design that you heard about in iOS 14 is especially useful on iPad. And we applied the same approach to other parts of the experience, like calls. Now an incoming call is presented with a compact notification, and this applies to all calls, including those from your iPhone or third-party VoIP apps. And of course, we're bringing this to iOS as well. Now there's one more key experience we've redesigned for iPad this year, and that's search. So we've redesigned search with a new compact design. We've rebuilt search from the ground up to be universal. Next, improvements 
to Apple Pencil. So this year, we're bringing Scribble to iPad. So you can handwrite into any text field and it will automatically be converted to text. You'll notice how Scribble recognizes both English and Chinese. Now, when I draw a simple shape and pause at the end, it'll automatically convert to that ideal shape. Say I wanted to use my handwriting in another app, I can easily select what I want, tap the new copy as text from the callout bar into an app like Pages, and it's automatically converted to type text. Next, let's talk about AirPods. AirPods will now seamlessly move between your devices without you having to manually switch them. We also have an exciting new feature coming to AirPods Pro, spatial audio. We can place sounds virtually anywhere in space, creating an immersive surround sound experience. Next, watchOS. In watchOS 7, developers can enable multiple complications, making even more richly personal watch faces. With watchOS 7, we're making it super easy to share watch faces. And in watchOS 7, we're adding dance. The app is getting a new name as well, fitness. And we're going to be adding even more capabilities this year in watchOS 7, tracking your sleep. In the evening ahead of your bedtime, your phone can display the wind down screen to help you transition mentally before you go to bed. Once it's time for bed, your screen will dim and your watch will go into sleep mode. Apple Watch tracks your sleep using a machine learning model that senses your motion and even interprets the micro movements caused by the rise and fall of your breath, providing signals for when you're awake and when you're asleep. There's another preventative care item that's so important, particularly now, hand washing. You'll see a countdown along with haptics and sounds to make sure you wash as long as you're supposed to. So some great new features we're bringing to the home this year. We formed an alliance and partnered with Amazon, Google, and other industry leaders to define a new interoperability standard for the smart home. And now when you open the home app, you'll see a new visual status right up top. You can easily see if you left the door unlocked or the lights on and quickly control them. We're introducing a feature to help you get the most out of those bulbs. Adaptive lighting. Adaptive lighting automatically adjusts the color temperature of your lights throughout the day. Another popular smart home category is cameras. You'll be able to define activity zones that focus on the most important areas. Another powerful feature we're bringing to cameras is face recognition. And with tvOS 14, we're gonna make your workouts and everything you do on Apple TV even more productive by extending picture in picture across the entire Apple TV experience. We're adding support for Xbox Elite 2 and Xbox Adaptive Controllers. Now, let's talk about some big changes coming to macOS. Our next release of macOS is macOS Big Sur, where we're making the biggest change since the introduction of macOS 10. We've brought Control Center to the Mac. Now, we've also reinvented Notification Center. Next, there are exciting updates for some of the most used apps, messages, maps, Safari, this year, we'll deliver the biggest update to Safari since it was first introduced. This year, we want to give our users even more visibility into how each site they visit tries to track them. We're adding support for the Web Extensions API so developers can easily bring over extensions that they built for other browsers. We have a whole slew of new features this year, from a customizable start page to redesign tab and native translation capabilities built right into Safari. But these changes are only the beginning. For years now, down deep below the surface, we've been working on something truly profound. Today is the day we're announcing that the Mac is transitioning to our own Apple Silicon. The vast majority of Mac apps can be recompiled as universal in a few days, so users can have fast, native apps. Rosetta 2 runs existing Mac apps. Our virtualization technology makes it easier than ever to bring other environments like Linux to the Mac. And Mac users can, for the first time, run iOS and iPadOS apps directly. Some of the biggest Mac developers have already gotten started. Microsoft is hard at work on Office for the Mac. And we've been working with Adobe on their flagship Creative Cloud, and many of their apps are already up and running great. For the customers, we expect to ship our first Mac with Apple Silicon by the end of this year, and we expect the transition to take about two years. Apple Silicon will bring amazing technologies, industry-leading performance, and a common architecture across all of our products. Our OS releases will be available as developer betas today, and each of them will have a public beta, including watchOS for the very first time starting next month. 
and all of this great software will be available to our customers this fall. Thanks to you all for joining us. This has been such a big day, and it's only the beginning of a huge week to come. So let's have a great WWDC.